Hey everyone, and welcome. Are you tired of your characters looking lifeless or just gliding across the floor? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your very first player animations in Unity. We'll take a character from Mixamo and using Unity's powerful animator, we'll create a system for running, jumping, and idling. By the end, you'll have a character that's responsive and alive. Now this tutorial is for beginners. We'll go over animator controller, how to bring in animations, how to set up your animations, and how to drive them through script. If you like this video, hit like and subscribe to help me grow this channel and keep making more videos like it. And if you stick around to the end, I'll show you an asset that I created that helps deal with one of the most frustrating things in Unity. All right, let's get started. First, let's get our project organized. It's a critical habit to build. In the project window, right click and create new folders for your assets. Let's make folders for animations, materials, models, and scripts. This is a necessary first step for every project, but it's one of the most tedious. Now, let's do some scene setup. First, let's create a new plane in the hierarchy. Remember to reset its transform to zero out its position and name it ground. Set the ground scale to five on the X and five on the Z. I made the scene look nice by adding a checker texture to the ground and environmental fog to the scene. You can download the project linked in the description to get these updates. To get a character and some animations, we're gonna use Mixamo, an Adobe website that offers free characters and animations. But if you have your own models and animations, you can substitute them, but there will be differences in setup that you'll have to fine tune on your own. Reach out to me in the comments or on Discord if you have questions about using your own models. The Discord link is in the description below. I'm not gonna go deep into the Mixamo website. Just know that there's a characters tab where you can select the character you want to download and then an animations tab for all the animations you wanna download. I selected the Y bot and then searched for idle, run, and jump animations in the search bar and chose the simplest animations I could find. You can search in each of these tabs to find what you like. If you get stuck or want the character and animations I'm using, feel free to follow the link in the description to download this project with the character and animations I used. We'll get a run, an idle, and a jump animation. We'll download our character in the idle animation as a Unity FBX file with skin, and the run and jump animations as Unity FBX files without skin. For the run, make sure to check off in place so that the character is not moving in 3D space. Now for the import. Drag your FBX files into the models folder you just created. After this, rename your YBOT breathing idle file to YBOT, as this will be our root character file since it contains our character skin or mesh. Then we'll set each model rig to humanoid by selecting all three and in the inspector rig tab, selecting humanoid for the animation type and hit apply. After that, we need to make sure all of our animations work off the same avatar, Unity's rig definition file. Go to the jump and run FBX files and in the rig import settings, select copy from other avatar under the avatar definition property for each. Now expand the YBOT FBX file in the project window and drag the avatar file into the avatar definition source slot in the inspector for run and jump. Remember to hit apply so the changes are saved. This process ensures that all of our animations run off of the same character rig or avatar, which will help us avoid anomalies between animations. Next, we'll adjust the jump animation so that we move into our jump quickly and it looks natural. We'll do that by selecting our jump FBX and in the inspector, going into the animation tab. From there, we can scroll down and select the handlebar on the timeline length. We'll scrub the left handle to the right until it aligns with the first peak on the root transform position Y property. Okay, let's quickly rename the idle animation. Click on the YBOT FBX file in the project window. In the inspector, select the animation tab and then scroll down to the animation name. It should be set to mixamo.com by default. Change it to idle. 
Finally, let's check off loop time for our idle and running animations, and then check off bake into pose for all three settings in the root transform rotation, position Y, and position X, Z on all of our animation files and hit apply. Now we can extract our animation clips from the FBX files and put them into our animations folder to keep things organized. Open each FBX and navigate to the respective animation clip in the project window. Select the animation clip and hit Ctrl D to duplicate it outside of the FBX. This will break the animation clip's relationship with the FBX files and will lose some ability to modify the animation clips. But at this point, our animations should no longer need to be modified. With our assets ready, we need to create the brain for our animations, called an animator controller. This is a state machine that Unity uses to drive the animation system. By creating animation states with transitions, you can provide robust logic that keeps your characters synced up with player input and in-game events. Okay, right-click in your project window, go to Create, Animations, and select Animator Controller, and let's name it Player Animator. Double-click to open it. This is where we'll build our animation state machine. Just to drive the point home, an animation state machine is, put simply, a set of rules for when your character should switch from one animation to another. Drag your idle animation into the grid. It'll automatically be the default state. Now drag your run and jump animations in as well. To tell the character animator when to switch animations, we'll use a parameter. These are variables we can access in our transitions and through our scripts. Go to the parameters tab, click the plus button and select bool. Name it is running. A boolean is a true or false value we'll use to signal to the animator whether the character is running or not. Now right click on the idle state and select make transition to the run state. Select the new arrow that you just created. In the animator inspector, add a condition for is running and set it to true. Be sure to uncheck has exit time. This will give us more responsive transitions. Make sure the transition duration is set to 0.25. Do the same thing in reverse from run back to idle, but this time set is running to false. Uncheck has exit time. In this transition, also set the transition duration to 0.15 and the interruption source to next state, then current state. This allows the transition to be interrupted should we need to switch quickly to another state, like the jump state. For jumping, we'll use a trigger. Go to parameters and create a new trigger called jump. Go back to your idle state and make a transition to the jump state. For this arrow, set the condition to our jump trigger. Again, uncheck has exit time, and let's also set next state as our interruption source. Set the transition duration to 0.05. Now create a transition from jump back to idle. This transition should have no conditions. It'll happen automatically once the jump animation is finished, returning our character to the idle state. Let's also set next state as our interruption source here. Set the exit time to 0.45. This ensures our animation plays as long as it can before returning to the idle pose. We don't want our character to slide across the ground still playing the jump animation if we've landed already. If you're using another animation, this will take some fine tuning. Okay, let's create a transition from run to jump and back. We'll recreate what we did for the idle to jump. This time, make sure to set the interruption source for both transitions to next state and uncheck has exit time from run to jump, but not from jump to run. Now that our animation brain is built, we just need a C-sharp script to communicate with it. I've created a script in the scripts folder called player controller. I'm not going to go into every line of this script. Instead, I'll talk about the relevant parts. You can get this script in my downloadable project files linked in the description. First, we need to get a reference to our animator component. We'll do that in our start method. Every frame will fire a raycast toward the ground to see if we're grounded. 
We'll use that to set our is grounded bool in our player controller so that we can only jump when we're grounded. I've also added a timer to avoid being able to jump continuously, which can cause issues if our animation needs to restart before it's finished. Then we'll listen for our player's movement input. When the player presses a movement key, we tell the animator to set the is running parameter to true. When they stop, we set it to false. And finally, when they press the jump button, we use a set trigger command. This will instantly fire our jump animation. With our code ready, let's assemble our character. Drag your character model from the models folder into the scene. We'll need to add a few crucial components to this game object. First, the animator component. Drag your player animator asset into the controller slot. Next, add a character controller component. This will handle all of our physics and collisions. Drag the player controller script onto the character and set skin width to 0 0.002. Be sure to adjust the height and radius to fit your character. Everything is now connected. Our script is reading our controls and the animator is playing the right animations. You now have a working character controller with a complete animation system. And there you have it. We went from a static character to one that feels alive and is responsive to user input. If you like this video, hit like and subscribe to help me grow this channel and keep making more videos like it. All right, remember how I said I'd show you an asset at the end of this video? Well, here it is. Dealing with Unity's project files and keeping everything organized can be really tedious. That's why I created Ordo, the Unity Project Organizer. It's a Unity asset that automatically generates a professional folder structure and instantly organizes imported assets for you. It takes care of the tedious work so you can focus on what's fun, building your game. You can create some complex rules for organizing your assets automatically and save them to a template to reuse in all of your projects. It monitors Unity's project window and updates file locations every time they're moved. You can turn it on and off whenever you want and you can scan your project's health to clean up a bloated project with unused assets. I put a link to Ordo in the description below and for my YouTube community, I've created a special discount code of 50% off available to the first 20 people. All right, time to thank my newest Patreon supporter, Benson. Thank you so much for your support. It means a lot to me and every little bit helps. All right, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.